Our next speaker is an expert at communication. So he wrote a book that you all know and love called Exactly What to Say. Please welcome to the stage, Phil Jones. I've got the magic in me. Every time I touch that track, it turns into gold. Everybody knows I'm but I did see the agenda, and I did see the laydown of just content after content after content. I saw information poured at you. I saw wisdom being shared, and it made me think about an old saying. The old saying it made me think about was that knowledge is power. Thinking about that old saying this morning, looking at you great people here, I thought I'd ask you a simple question. Is that true, yes or no? See, in my experience, that statement is complete and utter nonsense. Dribble. I'll explain for why. It's show of hands in this room who knows of something they should be doing or could be doing that would help grow their real estate business and is still not doing it. <laughs> See, it cannot be the knowledge that leads to the power, right? It can't be that simple. It can only be the implementation of said knowledge. The stuff you choose to do, the things you choose to put into practice. In our next 59 minutes or so, I'm going to throw information at you that is kind of like drinking water from a fire hose. I expect you to spill somewhere near most of it. What I want you to do, though, is to catch the drops. Catch the drops that are going to be useful for you, you and only you, that you can choose to put into practice as early as tomorrow. Sound fair? I also see many of you there are poised, ready to take notes. I'd much rather you took notice. In fact, I'd go as far as saying, please, please, pretty please, do not write a single thing down in our time together. Nothing. Nada. Not unless you're going to use it. You're going to do something with it. You're going to put it into practice. Sound fair, yes or yes? yes. Being a salesperson is not a bad thing. The perception of being a salesperson is what is the bad thing. What do I mean by that? I mean, if anybody, particularly a client, ever says the words to you that you are a good salesperson, there's a strong possibility that that is not a compliment. <laughs> what they may have been saying is, stop it, stop it, please, now, I don't like it. We're not looking for applause for our sales skills. That's not the goal we're looking for. Job well done in this world isn't you're a great salesperson. It's the receipt of something so much more simple than that. The receipt of gratitude. The receipt of the words thank you more often. So if you thought this morning I could give you ideas to be more pushy, more sleazy, more slimy, better at telling lies, wrong room. But if you want to understand some strategies that can result in people seeing your value, taking action based on your advice, and then saying thank you at the end of the process, that's exactly what we're here for. Finish this sentence for me. If you do not ask, you do not receive, you do not get. We know that to be true. Answer me as loud as you can. Salespeople, born or made, born or made, what do we think? Hey. Hmm. Let me rephrase the question. What does a three-year-old do when they want something? Hmm. See, the first thing a three-year-old will do is they'll ask. Failing that, they'll ask again and again and again and again and again. Failing that, what do they do? Whatever it takes. They'll do whatever it takes. I believe that every single one of us was born with the innate ability to be able to sell stuff. We know that if you do not ask, you do not get. We know that would be true. I'll take it one stage further. I believe that your success in life is in direct correlation to the quantity of quality asks that you make, period. Your success in life is in direct correlation to the quantity of quality asks that you make. So knowing that is true, and knowing that if you do not ask, you do not get, can somebody please tell me what stops you from asking for the things that you want in life? Did you know how decisions are really made? Firstly, every decision every human being has ever made has been made at least twice. Every decision every human being has ever made has been made at least twice. What do I mean by that? I mean, we first, hypothetically, make decisions in our mind's eye. Ever said the words to yourself, I cannot see myself doing that? It's a literal thing. If you cannot see yourself doing something, the likelihood of you choosing to do it, slim to none. Therefore, if I can get you to see yourself taking an action before I invite you to take an action, chances of you then take that action significantly higher. That's the first thing to understand about decision making. 
When is the worst time to think about the thing you're going to say? It's in the very moment when you're saying. It's in the very, very moment when you're saying. So our goal is to be able to elevate our thinking, elevate our approach to the conversations that we have. Really, there are only a few things that we need to be able to get better at if we're to look to be able to perform at hyper levels of performance right now. And if I asked a room full of people whether they wanted to do good at something, to do better at something, or do their best at something, what do you think most people pick? They pick the best. Now, I believe that that is a stupid belief. And I'll explain for why. Because best practices suppress performance. If there is a best way of doing things, that's as good as it gets, and that can look down at me. Best is only informed from the past. I particularly remember a point in time in my life where I really struggled with something. What I struggled with as a kid was tying my shoelaces. And what would happen is, is my dad would say to me, Phil, it's easy. You just loop it, and you swoop it, and you pull it through. And I'm like, okay, I loop it, I swoop it, and that. We'll try this on repeat. Dad would say, it's easy, you just loop it, you like, oh God, and I'm trying my best. All the time I was trying my best, I made no progress. It wasn't until I decided to shift my focus from trying my best and to do the work to get better, that all of a sudden that thing became easier. Same is true in any skill you're looking to master. Don't look at how to do your best, work to get better. And the fun part is, wherever you are at in your professional journey today, can you be better tomorrow than you are today? Better the day after that than you were previous. In fact, if you live on the relentless quest for better, you will soon find that over time, better always beats best. Over time, better always beats best, because better can compound and compound and compound and keep going. One thing we all need to get better at is how we ask questions of people. Here's a five-step dance that will never change. It is that questions create conversations. Conversations lead to relationships. From relationships, you can create opportunities, and opportunities can lead to sales. And what so many people say to me, they say, Phil, if I could just get more opportunities, I'd drive more sales. So give me more opportunities, I'll drive more sales. Give me more opportunities, I'll drive more sales. I say, who are the people you need to be asking more questions of? What are the conversations you need to be having that you're not? Where do you have relationships that hold untapped opportunities? And where have you already created opportunities that require you to pattern interrupt to drive the next action? Those four questions could write you a very meaningful to-do list. Let's borrow some basic psychology in that human beings are a lot like sheep. What do I mean by that? We're happy to follow a pack. That's why you're far more likely to believe 37 strangers on a Yelp review than any recommendation from your mother-in-law. <laughs> so knowing that we are happy to follow a crowd and knowing that you would like to be able to tell people what to do without them feeling like they're being told what to do because you know they want to know what to do, next time you want to tell somebody what to do, simply explain to them what most people would do in that circumstance. And when you share with somebody, here's what most people would do in those circumstances, their little voice kicks off in head and says, aha, I'm most people. So I'm going to do that and there's no way you can convince me otherwise. And I know what at least 12 of you in the room are thinking. You are thinking there is no way on earth that would work on me because I am not most people. So you know what I say to all of you? that meet that criteria, I say, please, don't be like most people. <laughs> I've been Phil Jones. I would like you, please, pretty, pretty, please, to stop just counting your conversations. Instead, start making more of those conversations count. And I know that together, we can make this entire industry so much better when we raise to pro level. So thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. <laughs>